A coffin is carried from Melbourne's St Paul's Cathedral and placed on a gun carriage. This is the first major commemoration of Anzac on Australian soil. It's the funeral of a single soldier. Major General William Throsby Bridges, commander of the Australian Imperial Force at Gallipoli, is being laid to rest. Shot by a sniper while visiting the front line, the general's body has been returned to Melbourne from the Middle East in a lead-lined coffin. The streets of Melbourne are lined with people who are grieving. It's described as a sea of black. Women are wearing mourning black to signify the loss of their own sons. The general's remains are taken to Spencer Street Station and then transported to Canberra by train for burial. There are stories of communities coming out of Benalla, at Albury, greeting the train, which is a simple carriage um, clad with black crepe, offering their respects, grieving, playing funeral marches, creating a hymn around this soldier, this dead soldier, because he's one of ours who is coming home and he represents the grief of the nation. General Bridges is finally buried on a hill overlooking the Royal Military College Duntroon, where he'd been the first commandant. He's the only Australian soldier honoured with a home burial during the war, as government policy normally forbids the return of bodies from war zones. This means the General's funeral is a surrogate ceremony for all the nation's bereaved families. Just a month after Melbourne's outpouring of grief, Adelaide hosts the first Anzac Day known by that name. But it's far from a solemn occasion. The organisers of a carnival to celebrate the eight-hour day simply repurpose it as Anzac Day to raise money for the war effort and encourage enlistment. Volunteers marched, horses with empty saddles marched, uh, women in particular uh, went alongside the, the marches, raising funds, rattling tins and selling flowers. It was all about spectacle. It wasn't a day of mourning. Um, you had the staging of crashes of tram cars. You had people dressed up as prehistoric dinosaurs. Um, it, it was spectacle. It was celebratory. While Adelaide celebrates, back at Gallipoli, the fighting grinds on. Many of the first commemorations of Anzacs occur on the battlefield itself. They're conducted by comrades of the dead. They wanted to give men a decent burial and the Padres worked very hard to, to make sure that that happened, usually at night, you know, <laughs> under cover of darkness, burying men when they could. And their mates wanted to know that they'd been buried well, and I'm sure their families did too. The Anzacs makeshift graves are marked by wooden crosses made from empty ammunition boxes. They'd also take the, the tins that carried water across the peninsula, they'd beat that tin and they'd inscribe quite lovingly um, an inscription for that man. So you imagine the labour of that, etching that man's name, the date of his death, and perhaps a message there. When the Anzacs finally withdraw, the dead fill the thoughts of the living. You read accounts of, of men saying, you know, I hope they don't hear us as we're marching down the gullies to leave. And one of the padres sprinkled wattle seeds, you know, so he'd leave a bit of Australia on the Gallipoli Peninsula, on the, on the graves. The Anzacs may have passed their test, but now their families are counting the cost. You actually have these private memorials that are set up in homes, on mantelpieces. The rooms of the men themselves become a kind of shrine. They're actually very fragile assemblies of the pictures of men, the medals of men, the artifacts that are brought home. It could be a comb, it could be a Bible, something that carries a sense of that man. These become the focal point of a kind of shrine that families construct around the memory of that lost individual. If we count as a family, a person's parents, children, siblings, aunts and uncles and cousins, then every second Australian family is bereaved by the war. Its impact rolls through the towns and suburbs of Australia like a great wave of grief.